And welcome back to episode 21 of Genesis on the OTE Gamers server. Um, last time was kind of a fail episode. Um, I did some testing in a single player world. And yeah, that setup works. It works 100% of the time. I tried it, even tried like four or five different configurations for it. And it works. So somewhere between the server and the single player is different. Um, not sure what it is, why it is, or what the heck's going on, but it doesn't work. So we're going to automate the crystal growth chamber block. And we're going to get the rest of the stuff online today too. So, um, And we're actually going to do it with a little bit of magic. So let's get into it. All right, uh, let's see. First off, let's start out with this block here. It is called the Transvector Interface. <clears throat> and what this does, some of you who do a lot of this stuff know exactly what it is. It's a Thomcraft item. And what it does is it allows you to remotely connect to a different block. We use the upgraded version of the Transvector Dislocator up in our mob farm at first, until I upgraded it. Um, you can also use them to move the dislocators. You can move your nodes around in your node room. But today, we're not going to do that. We are going to play around with our inscribers, our charger, and our crystal growth chamber. Now. Since I know nothing about this crystal growth chamber, I have been told that it uses a lot less power so we can leave it on all the time. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just set this into the wall. Let's see, let's pick this spot right here. Now, we need to provide power to it. And the one thing I didn't test on... Um, uh, doing my little testing is whether or not that if you pump redstone into it if it'll or the uh, RF into it if it'll actually power it um, I've seen some episodes of other people's where it was causing issues where it wasn't doing the power but it was doing everything else like it's supposed to okay now here is let me get my book out and I'll show you guys the it's a Thomic Tinker and Transverse and Vector. Um, the bound block in the nearby vicinity, the sides will mimic the sides on each side of the selected block. And it'll function as an extension. It can accept Buildcraft, TE3, and IC2 power, Essentia items, liquids, and exporting them also. Now, I believe the range is, like, very short. It's it's not very long. Uh, the limit is uh, only four blocks. There it is. Um, so, there was another entry in there. What was it? Uh, okay, so you can you can camouflage the the, uh, the interfaces as well. So... But we don't need to. We're not going to see these. These are going to be down in the network floor. So, all right. So we are where we at? We're right there. So we need to get power up there. And I didn't grab my cables. I'm always forgetting something. It just seems like I'm always forgetting something. All right. So let's grab item item pipes. We're going to use Steve's factory manager on this with this too. I've noticed that it works. Um, the cables, some interfaces, and I think that's it for now. I know we're going to need this. Alright. So, we've got our crystal growth chamber, and since we've got to be within four blocks, so we've got one, two, three, 
4. Now let's see, let's double check this. If it's 4, let's see. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, which would be awesome if we could do it there. So let's put this there. Then we're going to take our transvector binder, okay? Now you're going to shift, right click. It's going to set the, uh, the interface. And then you're going to shift, right click on the block that you want to complete or uh, connect it to. All right, so that should be set. We need to get our ME cable up there. And let's just come up through here because we're going to have a couple other machines on this wall. All right, so now we're hooked up. And it should be chewing through power. Um, I already set up another uh, biofuel generator, so we are staying with power, plenty of power, and I disconnected, I turned off the, the quarry, uh oh, missing a channel, mm. we'll have to fix this later, oh, no, we need, um, actually, let me, I'll worry about that later, I guess. Actually, no, let me go ahead and cut. I need to take care of that because it's going to back up a whole bunch of other stuff um, coming through that chest. So I will be right back. All right, we are back. Um, evidently, we had some major issues. Uh, um, I hooked up, redid some wiring and hooked stuff up. One thing you guys always want to make sure you do is check your channels, check your channels, check your channels. What happened was I unloaded one of the channels and we weren't getting anything in or pulled out of the ender chest which resulted in my biofuel farm backing up and the TPS for this manager block went through the roof. As you can see, I got a naughty note from Auric on a couple of things. This is just one of them. Uh, by the way, guys, RF tools use the crafter to make the compressed cobblestone, not the um, the assemblers from thermal expansion. They actually work a lot better, and it's in one block. But, and in interest of trying to get this even lower, I added in a couple more bioreactors. Now remember, when you, when you increase the number of bioreactors, you have to increase the size that you're putting into them, or it won't fill them, alright? Or it won't fill them evenly. And you always want to double check all your, your settings in here, make sure everything is set up right too, so... Um, I've got four bioreactors going all at full efficiency, and <laughs> believe it or not, guys, I am still gaining on resources. I will fill back up on resources, so um, I'm thinking about setting a condition in, in here. I've got to play around with it a little bit, that if, to see if I can do, like, if these barrels are full to where it automatically trashes them because I don't need all that extra stuff in my inventory I, I bet you I've got a crap ton of this stuff sitting in the ME system that I don't need so um, also when I was fixing stuff I changed around how this is working now while I'm after I get my stuff done over there, I've got to rework a few other things to make this work for the whole thing. But I'm actually pulling in biofuel into the system, and I've got 622 28 buckets. Okay, and it's going up. Um, if we actually open up this drive and look at our fluid drive, you can see it is going up dramatically. So we are not even coming close to using the amount of biofuel that we're using. So. I'm thinking about doing a power station and maybe help 
with some other stuff. Maybe not use the reactor when the mining world gets reset and just run off biofuel. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm importing it into the ME system and then the ME system is exporting it out to these, well, to this one. I need to make another one. Um, it says missing channel, but if you come in here and look, it's it's staying full. And it, this says the same thing, missing channel, but it's empty. So it's, it's filling in. So let's go for uh, another export bus. We want the fluid export bus. We need a formation. Okay, so we're going to put that on here and then just drop our bucket of biofuel in there and then this should fill back up. So now we are producing way more power than what we're using in this system again. So yay for us. All right, crisis averted. The tick rate of our machine or uh, our inventory manager is going down and we're going to put that back in there. And now we are on. Okay, now we are back over to here. All right, so our crystal growth ch chamber, we've got it powered. We've got it combined to our interface. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to make sure that our interface, our uh, transvector interface, is working with our uh, to auto craft with it. And I need to eat. All right. So what we need to do, or what what I'm going to try to do here, is try to set up two things at once. So, but right now we're just going to worry about this block. We're going to put our machine inventory manager, and then we are going to put a chest that I didn't grab. See, I never have everything I need. Let's go to the big one here. Alright, so we're going to put a chest down. This is going to be our inventory for our uh, machine manager. And did I grab some cable? Yes, I did. Okay. So, we're going to put that there. So what do we need to do? We need to we need our ME interface yet, which I got one of these. Actually, that's wrong. I set that up wrong. All right, so we need to make sure that both our ME interface and our chest is touching our system here, okay? So, and then I really need to make a wireless too. Where am I going? Where am I going? I need my patterns. All right, so I need my patterns. Got a hand. I don't have a pure one yet. Okay. We're gonna put our patterns in here, and I'll get the pure one, pure one made in a minute. We're gonna hook our interface up. Okay. Now I believe since this is just providing power for that, um, it's not taking up a channel, and this is only taking up one channel. So if we come over here and look, yep, we're only using one channel. Awesome. All right, so let's program this system up. We're going to create a trigger, and with this trigger we're going to do a flow, okay, and what this is going to, with our flow, we're going to go to split to two outputs, all right, so that's, so the trigger, and then it's going to split off to two, <coughs> excuse me, first thing we're going to do is do an inventory input, for both sides, 
for our two different systems that we're going to have hooked up. And then we're going to do an output. Actually, we're going to need more than two. We're going to need three. Because then we're going to have to do output. Because we're going to do this, we're going to do three different ones. And I'll explain here in a second. So we're going to change this to 5 out. Now we're not going to use all 5. We're only going to use 3, but they don't have a 3 on there. All right, so input. Inventories is going to be our chest. All right. Target is going to be doesn't matter. Items is going to whitelist. And now here we're going to put our seeds for Certus Quartz. Okay, and then we're going to change this to fuzzy detection. All right, so if we look for our seed, as soon as this updates, if you look, service court seeds are 4903 on the data. The nether quartz, 4903. 600 so it just changes the metadata on it and we're going to keep them um, so we're just going to keep the metadata the same or, uh, so that we're ignoring the metadata for this all right and then that the output on that is going to be this transvector interface all right target doesn't matter items blacklisted okay so if we hook this up, it should now I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so it now should be working to where anything comes into that chest and with our ME interface, we know that if we're using seeds, they're going to get popped into the chest and then kicked out. Okay, well, what about our Fluix crystals? Okay, so our items, we also need to whitelist our nether quartz, our redstone. And our charged Certus Quartz. Okay, so all those will go into there also. Alright. And that'll make their fluids crystals. And output should be the same. Alright, so this one is going to be... Oh, we gotta do this a little bit differently. I don't, this is gonna loop it. And that's not good no okay this will work this will work okay so our import is going to be inventory from our transvector target doesn't matter items okay we're going to whitelist actually blacklist we'll leave it at the blacklist because it doesn't matter because all the items that come in from there is going to get outported all right and our output is going to be the ME interface and then target and items don't work we are going to test this here in a second to make sure that it's all working right okay so let's go up top see if we have any seeds got a fluid seed uh, I've got a sort of seed. All right, just to make sure that this is working, let's throw this sort of seed in there. We see it disappear. See that one disappear. Come up here and look at the growth chamber. Okay, so these guys are rocking and rolling. Wait here a minute for these to get done. And they should disappear. Now see how fast this is going a lot faster than the regular growth chamber. 
um, the multi-block one. So, and it's supposed to use a lot less power. So I like this. We're gonna see if this works. And they disappear and they get pulled out. All right, great gravy, awesome. Good gravy, awesome. So that's working. Now we're gonna work on our other transvector. All right. So we're gonna put a second one down. We're gonna go up top, and this is for the charger. And we're gonna put that sucker right here. Okay, so that should be getting power. Which it's not. Oh, it doesn't connect to the back, that's right. All right, let's fix that. I'll put a facade on this later. Let's get this rocket and rolling. All right, there we go. Now we got power to it. And we'll put a facade on this and on the back, and you won't see any of that. All right, so we got to get our binder out. Shift right click on our vector first. And then we're going to shift right click on our charger. So now our charger should be in the system. Okay. Now we need to add an inventory cable. I could have probably done this a little bit different, but that's how we're doing it. And in here, for our input here, our inventory is going to still be the chest. And then the item that's in this chest, we're going to whitelist our certus quartz. Okay. Not the charged certus quartz, just our certus quartz. So that should be the only thing going in to this inventory. And our output is going to be from, let's see, get our X and Y here. Okay, 2483 is our X, all right? So we want 2483. This is the one that we want. Um, I'm looking at the X, by the way. That is what uh, we're selecting for our out. And then targeting items is, doesn't matter. Now what we also need to do is go into our... And by the way, if you hold right-click on one of these nodes, you get that little deal. And you can kind of clean it up a little bit. Our input here for inventories, we also need to select that second transit vector. All right. So now I don't have a pattern for that yet. So let's get a service quartz and see if this works. I've already got lots of service quartz. So I'm only going to throw four into the system. And we should see when I hop up here. Service course in there. And it looks nice and neat and clean. There's not a whole lot of wiring up top and you don't have to worry about it. So let's see. Wait here for a second. Yep. Yep, there it just changed. Alright, so it is working. It's pulling it out and putting it back into the system. Now let's double check, make sure, yep, there just went the last one, so it's pulling it out of the chest. Awesome. All right, so that's that system. Okay, let me, oh, I still have to add in the grinder to make our seeds with. All right. Um, I think I'm going to have to do that separate I think I'll just do that with just a simple ME interface because uh, I don't want to hook it to that system because if I hook it to that system it's gonna pull the service quartz and try sticking it in here too so um, all right let me get stuff set up so I can do the grinder real quick and I will be right back
All right, I think I got everything. We're going to do a little bit of testing too to see how this is going to work for us. All right, so these are our growth chamber one, and this is our charger one. And we're going to put a space. Actually, I didn't want to do that, but okay. We're going to put a space and then put another trans vector here. Okay, so get that out of the way and all right so anyways if you right click on a trans vector with a block it'll code it or camouflage it and then shift right click with an empty and take it off just so you guys wondered on how I did that all right so we're gonna put our ME interface on top all right and then we're gonna take our power we're gonna put it on the back with our tank on top and it should be setting out biofuel yep okay now it's not it's gonna look like it's empty because the ME system is pulling out the majority of it there's not a whole lot of extra in there but as you can see it's it's working all right so now let's bind this to our pulverizer. We've already got it set here. And here's where the test comes in. It does have power. It does have power. All right, that is awesome. Okay, so now we need to make sure that our redstone is in to ignore our configure we've got no input slots so our top needs to be input and then this side we're going to do our output and then we'll take the uh, impulse ducts and loop them around to our interface okay so then we should be able to go like this and like that and then that should loop around and send it back in let's test let's grab some cobble oh wow I'm down to 2000 cobble that thing's cooking pretty good over there all right so I got a stack of cobblestone I should probably upgrade this We might not be getting any power in, which is easy enough to fix. And this is not auto feeding out. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see. Do I have a servo handy? Yes, I do. Let's see if we put this servo on here. And ignored. Is it pulling it out? Yep, there it goes. Okay. As you see, it just went through. So if we go up here and look, it's pulling it out. Gravel's going too. All right. Now, here's the problem is our energy is not working. So let's reconfigure our system here. Try something else. Okay, I got a redstone energy fluid duct and it does not connect. All right, so we're gonna have to take this upstairs, which is kind of a shame because I really hate to power one block with this and that should be there filling back up and we're gaining power again all right so now this thing should never run out of power all right so it's all working now we just need to make recipes for our um, 
for our interface for auto crafting. Now we can't do auto crafting yet because as you notice in my inventory, the auto the, the crafting CPUs are in my inventory, so none of my auto crafting works right now. But all right, so need our Certus quartz. We're gonna make a stack of the dust to start off with, because we don't even actually have any dust in the inventory. Okay. So now we should have some Certus dust. And we're gonna need one Certus quartz. And our pattern, make sure that this is set to processing. So one Certus quartz equals one dust. And then encode. And then same thing with the nether. We're going to go nether quartz into nether dust. And we don't have any nether dust. Do, 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 E dust. It's electronic dust, I'm telling you, it's a thing. It, it it will be a thing. Electronic dust. Mark my words. Alright, so our nether dust. Got that pattern. And then we need we don't have any fluix. So let's look up fluix. We've got 30 crystals. We're going to have to get some made up. We're going to give our system a test here just a minute. Oh, and it wasn't fast enough. So, Fluix. So, our, red, our Fluix crystal makes Fluix dust. Okay, so let's go put these in our ME interface. Now the nice thing is with this here too is we can add, we've got room for six more patterns. So if we want to put our, our obsidian in there for our hardened, um, for yeah, our hardened glass, our pulverized obsidian or in our lead, we can do that. We can put different stuff in there and we can just auto run it through here just the same. Um, and we also should be able to add in more interfaces around this too. Okay, so if we, we can put one on this side, we could put one on this side, we could put one on the bottom, on the back. So we've got a lot of room to add just to just that one block for that pulverizer, which is going to turn out awesome. Okay, oh, I should have. Let's go back to the basement. All right, so we are going to go ahead and just see we're only using two channels too. Out of this these three machines we've got running here, we're only using two channels. And I'm going to throw these on here. And we're still only using two channels. All right. So let's go craftables. All right, so let's make some, we need to make some Fluix crystals. So let's make 50 of them. Okay, so it only uses 206. So we're gonna start that and it should be running. We run over to the growth chamber. There it goes, that fast. It's almost like an instant craft with that thing. So now if we look up our Fluix crystals, Oh, we're still in stored. We're at 79 flux crystals, so that's done. All of our craft crafting is done. Awesome. So now if we need dust, let's make 10 dust. Come over here and look. And there we go. We're crafting dust. All right. 
Let me check the time and see what we can do. Um, I think we're getting close to the end of the episode, but let me check time and see what we can do, and I will be right back. All right, guys. Guess you know what this means. We are out of time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you guys liked the episode, give me a big thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the series and you like what you're seeing so far, hit that big red subscribe button. Please, any comments, questions down below. Until then, guys, I will see you next time.